former Kirby Smart assistant. Capital One Orange Bowl the other day, Georgia and Florida State. What was the score? It was the final was 63 to three. Lab McConkey running through for the touchdown. Here. Happy birthday, Des! Uh, eating Stanford Steve's cake. Yeah, I'm gonna let you go ahead and take this highlight. I'll eat the cake. Well, here's the thing: Carson <laughs> Beck played, and whenever yep. he announced he was coming back and that he was going to play, we knew that the offense was going to look similar, and they certainly did. Uh, Georgia dominated this game. Florida State played really hard, sort of ran out of steam, ran out of depth. 63 to three, the final. Here's what Kirby said afterwards: Throwing oranges. People need to see what happened tonight, and they need to fix this. It needs to be fixed. It's very unfortunate that they, who has a good football team and a good football program, are in the position they're in. And everybody can say it's their fault and it's still their own problem, all right? And everybody can say that we had our guys and they didn't have their guys. I can listen to all that. But college football has got to decide what they want. And I know things are changing, and I think things are going to change next year. And you know what? There's going to still be bowl games outside of those. People got to decide what they want and what they really want to get out of it. Because it's really unfortunate for those kids on that sideline that had to play in that game that didn't have their full arsenal. And it affected the game 100%. There's no doubt about that. Seminoles were missing close to 30 players. I want to make this point. Listen to what I'm saying. That neither validates nor invalidates anybody's position about whether Florida State should be in this game playing in the playoff. Has nothing to do with it the way they played against Georgia. But it has everything to do with how we should look at these bowl games outside the college football playoff framework. Some of it's going to be alleviated next year in the 12-team playoff. We might as well come to the realization, if you're not in the playoff framework, they're competitive exhibition games. That's what they are. But we like them. They're good content on TV. Football players like to play football, like Lanning was saying. But what should be done about it? I, I don't know. I think the 12-team playoff will be, is going to create a lot of buzz. How many games will that be? Seven total? You have the quarterfinals, the semis, and, and the national championship. It's going to remind me next year of it, it being worse. I think we're headed to – I'm a bad college basketball fan. We all get our bracket out, March Madness. Tell me about the NIT. How's that going for you? You know who's even in the NIT? That's where the Bulls are going next year. I think you eliminate the Bulls. Nobody wants to play in them. Don't play Bulls. Just have the, the, tw uh, the 12 teams. We'll, we'll get excited about those. And if anybody, if you want to add maybe five or six more Bulls outside of that, then do five or six. But we're getting to a point where it's ridiculous. We're putting six and six bowl, uh, teams in bowl games nobody cares about. And if players don't want to play in them, Hell with it. Don't have bowl games Man, I anymore. Couldn't, I couldn't disagree with you but, more. But, but tell go, me, go well, tell me why. Are, I'm is, a bowl guy. Yeah, he's I'm a bowl it. junkie. Yeah. Yeah. But I'm tired of saying bowls are fun. Yeah, this nobody is, wants to play in them. Don't play them. Herbie, you've been around college football, and you're going to the Hall of Fame here because you've been around for 28 years, and I think you hold the bowl games in high regard. I do. And I had the incredible opportunity to play in not only the Fiesta Bowl, the Sugar Bowl, but the Monarchy Car Care Bowl and the Gator Bowl. Uh, and both of those, our team viewed them as a massive ordeal. Mm -hmm. All the work they we've did. put in all year. This is one last time for this particular team to come together. And now, with the big brains, obviously, business decisions being made in some places. By the way, it's not happening everywhere. Bryce Young, Will Anderson, they played last year. Okay, They were not in the college football playoff. Bo they Nix is playing today. Bo Nix is playing for Oregon. I mean, there was guys playing for that Georgia team. So it's just like kind of picking and choosing which roster is going to go, which one isn't. But I think to Kirk's point, and I wasn't at ESPN at the time, and I know what you're saying because I like watching football, especially now you can gamble on these games. Right. So the numbers are going to be huge. But once you started just making like the target toilet bowl and then like other bowls and then like every day had a new one with a new name and teams that we had never heard of all season are getting a chance to celebrate. The, I think just it lost its luster, which is what I think Herbie is getting to. Yeah. If we can figure out how to get that back alongside the 12 game playoff, I think we'll all be in on that. But I don't know what the answer is. I I don't know that we can get that back, and I don't know that we need to get that back. I'm sort of leaning toward uh, Reese on this one, and I don't even know what Reese is going to say, but we've been on a wavelength here. So <laughs> we, we have think, been for a while. So, a so if scary. you go ask oh the players of Florida State that just got beat 63 to nothing. Three. Sorry. 63 to three. Do you want to play in that bowl game? <laughs> yeah. I would imagine that those kids that got a chance to play would say yes. We're looking at it from the standpoint of how we feel about what happened to them. Whereas when I was a young player and I'm backing up Bobby Olive and Jeff Graham and Stave Line, those guys, and I'm waiting on my chance to get on the field. Yeah. 
if it happened in a bowl game, then thank goodness, let's go. Because I'm trying to, you know what I mean? I'm trying to build something with my teammates. Right. That might be the Florida State team that we see next season. Yeah. So that was invaluable for those guys. Not just to go play in a bowl game, but to see this is what we, we want to be what that sideline is giving us right now. That's where we got to go. Because we're younger, we haven't played yet, but now we get a chance to see over there the way they took the field. Next year when we get out here, Dez, Pat, Reese, that's what we need to be right there. Mm -hmm. So from that standpoint. Unless we're a top four no, no, round this, draft pick. This, you know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. But those is, kids, it means something to them. They I get agree. a chance to play. It is a tragedy that you were playing behind stay blind first, okay? <laughs> now, I told him that. that. Talk about that game. That I, just, I think that's a one-off. You know, we're looking at this Florida State game and against Georgia, and obviously we wanted to have a competitive game. We didn't get that because they had just a record number of opt-outs. But I do believe that's a one-off. It's a very unique situation because of circumstances of the CFP and everything that went on with that. But we are get getting more and more players opting out of these bowl games. I've always said I didn't believe that a 6-6 six and six team, a team going 500, should be rewarded with a bowl game. But it's just big business. People want to see football. They want to bet on football. And that's why we have that. We wouldn't put the product out there if there wasn't a demand. We're not going to get that that result often, 63 to 3. You know, that was just right. a unique circumstance. Duke's Mayo Bowl was close. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and, you know, Kirk, I totally West understand Virginia what you're saying. I, I, think West Virginia. I think it's changing the way we think about the other ones. And it's okay. They're an exhibition game. It's okay to try things. That's going to take some change of mindset with the coaches too they're gonna I'd love to see them be able to play if you bring in say a freshman quarterback who enrolls early let him play well, let him play well, you see during an exhibition game when West Virginia took the field with Bill Stewart to play Oklahoma mm. that, that 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 didn't feel like an exhibition game that I was watching like when when Dez played on this field against Washington but they they were this there was no difference back then they're not playing for anything other than a bowl game but it felt different when I watched West Virginia Agreed. Bill Stewart beat Oklahoma. So uh, it, it's like it's not like the meaning has changed from 1982 to today. Here you go. Uh, You're coming now. That, that's right. I it don't hasn't. think it's changed. It has. not but, but but our perspective of it has changed because back then we looked at it like that was the ultimate prize and goal. The Astro Blue Bonnet Bowl back in the day, the other games we're talking about, but, you know, they had no bearing on the national championship. Know, but it, but it has never bearing have. on your pride. Like if, if we leave right now and we go play ping pong, like we, we would play winner just keeps going. Like mm -hmm. if you win, you advance. We would play like we were sweating, like we were yeah. just to compete and play yeah. like that. If these guys were all in this field, it doesn't matter what's at stake. You're competitor. You right. just want don't to play. You, don't yeah. you think, Solid even scorers. though they got even though they got steamrolled, to Joey's point, don't you think that those guys from Florida State that played played hard and yeah. were sweating? And they, and they earned yeah. the they Trying. earned they earned the right to play. They practiced all season long and gave everything they had. 63 to 3. Like I know 30 it. guys that didn't come yeah. I don't know if yeah. they're talking they about that game ever again. Stay. They're trying to tell people they were one of the opt-outs, I think. Stay. Yeah. Stay. Well, maybe I, 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 I got this whole conversation. Here's, here's blind, the whole huh? thing. And I, look, reasonable <laughs> minds can differ baller, on all of this, but I think the Joey, one thing that people say is Pete Thamel joins us now. Pete, as you look at this, it's really easy to say, hey, we got to find a solution. We've got to incentivize players to stay in there and not do it. But there are a lot of of hurdles logistically uh, with the way things are constructed right now to making many changes to all of this. Sure, Reese, and I think all the different perspectives on the desk speak to the complications being faced here. Uh, pushing forward, there's going to be a lot of discussion in the upcoming months, and they can be distilled to two facets, calendar, like you guys spoke about, and compensation. When you look at the college football calendar, obviously the 12-team playoff comes next year. The college football championship game is January 20th. The academic calendar obviously comes into play here, guys. It'd be easy to say, oh, the portal opens in March. Well, you have to be enrolled January at a lot of schools. So when you push forward, how that calendar gets distilled is going to be an interesting facet. One thing that could move, and there'll be more discussion about, is signing day leaving December. As for compensation, who knows when some type of revenue sharing does come to college football. It feels inevitable. You heard Charlie Baker's proposal a few weeks ago. Could NIL deals, Reese, be tied to playing the whole season, much like the guys on the desk who played in the NFL got game checks? They couldn't walk away week 16. 
Uh, Elaine Kiffin makes a great point. There's a quote that's on the screen there in front of you that this system, they open up free agency while the season's still going on. There are a lot of changes that need to be made. And one of the funniest moments of the year, uh, probably Army-Navy, when we were talking about some of the quarterbacks moving. Pat, didn't you say, oh, yeah, yeah, school. Yeah, school. Yeah, because yeah, they got to enroll in school. <laughs> I, didn't even, I didn't even think about that. I'm like, what are we talking about? They're making more money than they'll ever make in a classroom. But, yeah, you're 100% right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I guess there's a lot that goes into this. Hey, look, this is uh... – I mean, we want man. to make it look, look pure. Look at your man on the end. It, aren't it's they a already, it's aren't a they professional already enterprise. Paid? If okay, you incentivize, aren't they okay, already you. being paid? They, they are. With NIL? But, but I'm I mean, saying within the bowls, maybe. I think Pat brought this up yesterday that if maybe you, there's some type of prize. And, and still, if guys don't want to play, I'm cool with that. Or if the, if NIL, not, if the NIL people right. say, we're not going to pay you unless you guarantee you're going to play all the games, then. Give something. Give something. So I can breathe.